Well, that would be, you know, we could do a menu, and you know what? That would be, that would be the day to do mule's ear. Yeah. Oh. Mule's ear. <laughs> mule's ear. Yeah. Oh so my gosh. Oh serious. my God! What a good recipe that is. I'm so glad she explained to me. <laughs> that's not really a mule's ear. Straight, straight from, no, no, we're not eating the ears of mules here. <laughs> Poor things. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's the shape. Mm -hmm. And the, um, and what, I watched Fred, my, my brother and I, we would tag along behind Fred. And uh, he would, uh, right after noon, because he would make it for dinner. Mm -hmm. And right after, after dinner, which is the midday meal, he would, after he cleaned up, he would tie on a fresh apron and take a big pan and go down the hill <clears throat> and into the basement and into the cooler and he'd take a big quarter of beef and flunk it onto the, there was a great big round slice of massive of a massive old cottonwood tree that someone had taken that was the butcher block mm -hmm. that had been used for what a patina it had with all the beef, mm -hmm. you know, fat grinding into it all those years. It was just, it was like a beautifully, beautiful mm -hmm. piece of marble with all the wood grain in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would flop that on there and he would take a fillet, fillet knife and he would very carefully cut out the entire round all in okay. one piece. <clears throat> And then, because the round is it's pretty wide, it's like about like this, and kind of oval shaped. And he would, then he would take a great big sharp knife that was long, and he would cut these um, great big collops off the, off the entire round, and they would be like about this thick. Cut what off of them? Great big, great big, the entire round. So you're cutting off the entire piece of round. Uh -huh. So you would get a oval collop of, of beef collop. across the grain uh -huh. that was the whole round. I've never heard the word collop before. Yeah, okay. it's just it's just an old word for like a great big cutlet. Okay. And they would be about this long. And about this wide, okay, and so yeah. because they had that long oval shape, that's why they reminded people of mule's ears. Okay. And he would, he depending on how many he was going to feed, if it was haying season, he would be feeding, you know, fifteen or sixteen or seventeen guys. Very hungry guys. Hungry yeah. guys. Yeah. So he would probably take the whole part of the wide part of the round, and uh, then he. Do you want to go over and check it, Dad? I thought I had it on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's on. Yeah, it's on. <laughs> well, this is kind of where we're going to be repeating this. Oh, yeah. And anyway, the, the way that he prepared it was with, um, it w had to be tenderized with the meat mallet. Mm -hmm. and, and because he pounded flour into it, you mm -hmm. had to pound a lot of flour into it and a lot of salt and pepper. And then he would brown it in bacon fat. And they saved every spoonful of bacon fat from yeah. frying up bacon. So he would always have a great big... Crisco can of bacon fat on the back of the stove, and he would put a good dollop of that in each of these great big, he used big cast iron frying pans, and he would brown these collops on both sides. Mm -hmm. And then he would have a great big roasting pan, like the one I have down here, but about this big. Mm -hmm. And uh, a layer of meat, and then a layer of sliced onions, mm -hmm. just raw sliced onions, and then a layer of meat. Layer of onions, layer of meat, layer of onions, layer of meat, layer of onions, mm -hmm. onions on the top. And then he would, uh, and maybe throw in a few beef bullion cubes here and there. No. Go ahead. And then add water to cover. Uh -huh. And maybe a little Wor Worcestershire sauce into the water as well for extra flavor. And mm -hmm. then into the oven at about 250 degrees for about four hours. Hmm. And that would come out of there like so tender that you could just eat it with a spoon. Mm -hmm. It's just the simplest dish and it's just so delicious. I mean, you know, if you're ready to eat meat, <laughs> it's just unbelievably just basic good. The, it, it, the flavor of the bacon fat is all through it. And for people that were working hard, they needed to eat a lot of fat. It mm -hmm. was how you maintain your, your body temperature, especially in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. 
And so he would have that as the main dish and a side of like scalloped potatoes or mashed potatoes. Uh, and maybe a, a corn corn casserole on the side. We could do the corn casserole. That's an old favorite that uses kernel corn. Oh. Um, that is, it's just also a very delicious Montana dish. And then we could do the son of a bitch in a sack for dessert. <laughs> <laughs> or we could do um, rice pudding, which they called spotted dog. Because <laughs> raisins. Raisins. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, or just the simple fruit, fruit pies were very popular. Uh -huh. you, you could always knock the ball out of the ballpark with an apple pie mm. and uh, okay. he would start from scratch so we could put together Sugar a real menu. authentic Do menu. Oh. Uh, let's see, we would want to start at six in the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well it, it, we would have to devote an entire day and then you would have to edit but you have to, yeah. so the pudding oh, has yeah. to boil for about four hours. Yeah. In, in, a, in a steamer mm -hmm. and you could um, I would probably do the meat, then the pudding, then you would do the rest of the menu, working up to, and homemade bread, of course. Mm -hmm. Got to have homemade bread. Now, is the mule's ear specifically cowboy food, or was it something your mother might have You know, have I have made? never heard of it anywhere else but Montana.